Hello Revolution students and welcome to another video on the Chinese Revolution area of study one. This video is going to look at Mao Zedong's report on an investigation of a peasant movement in Hunan, the Hunan Report, which was published in March 1927 and it was a product of uh, his uh, several months of his surveying of peasants in the Hunan uh, province during uh, the Northern Expedition uh, when the uh, peasants were rising up and overthrowing their landlords. So it's a very significant document because in the Hunan report Mao sets out his basic revolutionary theory. Many of uh, his ideas about revolution, uh, his most significant ones, appear, first appear in this Hunan report. So that's why it is important to study. If you have a question on the exam about Maoism, for ex example, you could quote this Hunan report and ideas uh, within it. So anyway, without much further ado, let's get into it. So the key points, the first one, Mao argued that, the first key one here is that the peasants were more revolutionary than workers in China. So in this report, uh, Mao identified the peasants as the revolutionary class in China. We've spoken about this before. Other key, uh, some other key CCP leaders such as Li Dazhao had also advocated the, uh, the role of the peasants in a uh, revolution in China. And Mao uh, adopted this idea and he furthered it in the Hunan report. The second key point which links into the role of the peasants in a revolution. He argued that the revolution would um, come from the country rather than the city as Marx and Lenin had claimed. So if, for example, you have studied the Russian Revolution and much of the many of the significant events that occurred in the Russian Revolution occurred in St. Petersburg, Petrograd or Moscow. And it was very much in Russia a, a uh, a revolution that came from the cities. Uh, pretty much anyone who, whoever controlled St. Petersburg, for example, controlled the country. So that's where most of the revolutionary activity occurred. In China, though, we see particularly after the Shanghai Massacre, which occurs um, in April 1927, and then uh, the subsequent uh, White Terror, which spreads out from Shanghai, where the GMD kill many, many CCP members. The CCP are forced to flee into the countryside and, it, and this, uh, this makes them focus more upon uh, fermenting revolution within the country rather than the cities. And if we think back to uh, Mao being, uh, he, Mao had studied Marxism, but he was also a student, of, a very keen student of Chinese history and literature and throughout Chinese history there were many examples of uh, peasant rebellions, peasant uprisings, some that were very successful. Uh, not too long ago at this time in 1927 only uh, you know half a century or before, 70 years before, then the uh, Taiping Rebellion uh, where the Taiping rebels had taken over half of China, pretty much all of southern China below the Yangtze and they were only conquered, the Qing only managed to conquer them with the help of uh, foreign forces with the British and so forth. So um, big history of peasant uprisings, successful peasant uprisings in China and Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong is pretty much just uh, you know <clears throat> applying his knowledge of history to the current situation at the time in China in 1927. Um, related to that was then uh, this idea that class conflict was not between in a classic Marxist sense uh, workers and capitalists. That wasn't the, the key class conflict in China. From Mao's perspective, the key class conflict was between peasants who were exploited by landlords. Okay, so the class conflict for Mao Zedong, the key class conflict, was peasants uh, between peasants and landlords, and only when the peasants over, overcame exploitative landlords would they be uh, free and a socialist society created within China. The other really significant point that he makes in the Hunan report, Mao Zedong, is that he says there, and you can see the point, that the Communist Party should be subordinate to the peasants, i.e. the revolutionary masses, and that's a very, very different idea 
to, for example, what Lenin believed, that the, the Communist Party should be the vanguard of the revolution, <coughs> should lead the revolutionary uh, forces, the masses, should lead the workers and direct them. For Mao Zedong, um, in his idea of revolution, his theory of revolution, the party itself um, must listen to, be subordinate to uh, the masses and what the masses want. Okay, so uh, and this leads on to some of his other key ideas, such as the mass line. So we can see there uh, this idea of the party being subordinate to the masses was later developed at Yunnan into the theory of the mass line. And just a summary of that was that the CCP cadres, these CCP political officers, they go out into uh, the areas they control, they listen to the concerns of the peasants, and then they develop practical ways to, sol uh, to provide solutions to those concerns or problems, and then they work together with the peasants to implement those solutions to those problems. So, um, very, very key Maoist idea, this, this idea of the mass line. And then finally, one of the other, uh, I suppose, the most significant ideas in the Hunan report is this idea. Uh, Mao had a big focus in the Hunan report upon arming the peasants and making them into a revolutionary army. And we can see that just follows on from his other ideas about revolution in China. So um, I suppose he's, this revolutionary theory he sets out in the Hunan report um, working with the peasants, creating a peasant army, um, the masses being uh, being more important than the party itself and the party having to listen to the masses. These become really key ideas in uh, modern modern guerrilla warfare. They become key ideas in the, in the guerrilla warfare and the warfare that the Red Army um, waged against the Guomindang in China, particularly when we get into the 1930s and the Jiangxi Soviet, the Long March up to Yunnan and then the Civil War. But they're also, these ideas are then exported outside of China because the, uh, the, communist, the communist revolution is successful in China and they're exported out to places like, for example, Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh. Many of these ideas were based upon uh, Mao's ideas of guerrilla warfare. So uh, this Hunan report, very, very key document and then finally, I've just got a quote here, um, and this is just from the Hunan report, and it's uh, related to this idea about the, the Communist Party itself, the party being subordinate to the peasants. All revolutionary parties and all revolutionary comrades will stand before them, the peasants, to be tested, to be accepted or rejected as they decide. And going on from this quote, Mao says pretty much, um, if, if, uh, if, the party does not accept the ideas of the peasants and the peasants will just push, push them aside and it will become like a, a tempest, a, a wave of revolution that will spread throughout the country, this peasant movement and the CCP. Um, their only real option is to uh, ally themselves with this peasant movement. Okay. Let's get into a couple of historical interpretations now of Mao Zedong's uh, Hunan report. Okay, so the first historical interpretation is by Morris Meisner, and he writes, Mao Zedong's ideological heresies and his none too veiled criticism of the Comintern and Stalin threatened disciplinary action from the CCP and perhaps even expulsion from the party altogether. But the party's reaction was cut short when Chiang Kai-shek turned against the erstwhile communist allies in April 1927. So what uh, Morris Meisner is arguing here is that if it was not for the Shanghai massacre and the White Terror, if the GMD had not tried to, and Chiang Kai-shek, Zhang Jishu, uh, had tried to uh, kill and destroy the CCP party, then uh, Mao Zedong may have been expelled from the CCP because the leadership wouldn't have been distracted <laughs> by just the need to survive. Uh, they could have looked bit more closely at what he had written. And uh, it was highly possible they would have expelled him from the party for what he had written in the Hunan report, his criticism of the party, his criticism of Stalin, the Comintern. And uh, as a consequence, that may have uh, put an end to Mao's role in the history of the Chinese revolution. So 
That's the uh, first historical interpretation. The second historical interpretation here is from Philip Short, and Philip Short writes, Then he, Mao, would proclaim in messianic tones that the peasant movement was a colossal event which would alter the face of China and that the party must change its policy completely or become irrelevant. The extraordinary change in Mao's views, even allowing for hyperbole, the picture he painted was utterly different from anything any party official had written before. So this view that Mao, uh, the views that Mao was espousing in the Hunan report were, were very different to any leader, anything that any uh, CCP leader had written before. This is focus on uh, the role of the peasants in the revolution, the identification of the class conflict between peasant and landlord. Uh, as we discussed. And um, one thing also that we haven't touched upon, but which really comes out later on, Mao's, Mao's relationship with the party itself. Okay? Um, and this goes, if we get to Yunnan, we can see this, where, where Mao gets the CCP leadership, the party leaderships, to actually go through self-criticisms. Um, he's, he's got a very interesting relationship with the party, and he does believe that the party itself um, is subordinate to the peasants, is subordinate to the masses, and uh, and this really, you know, this this comes out in later events as well, in events such as the Cultural Revolution, the Hundred Flowers campaign, um, as well, where party officials are criticised by the masses, where Mao goes to the people to undermine the authority of the party in order to strengthen his own authority within uh, society and over China and over the party. Anyway, we'll get to that in uh, some future videos. But I hope this has been useful for you, for your understanding of the Hunan report and, uh, and why it's such a, a significant document in the Chinese revolution. It plays a, a key role, contribution. Um, to 1914 to the 1949 revolution. Anyway, I hope it's been useful and I will see you next time. Goodbye.